Hello and welcome to Rich Cast, the flagship podcast of algorithmic warfare. Ooh. That's good. That's a good phrase. That's a good like band name. Yeah. Like if you were in high school, you would for sure play bass in a band called Algorithmic Warfare right now. Neli. Neli would for sure. A hundred percent. Um Cadillac this week. This is a true story. Cadillac this week teased a new concept called opulent velocity. Oh yeah. Which is really good. Like really good. But it sounds like the name of one of those clubs or restaurants in New York. It's always empty, but always open. Yeah. And it does bottle service. But it, but no one's ever in there. No one. Fully staffed, no visitors, opulent velocity. I love that. I would stand in line for that. Algorithmic Warfare is playing at opulent velocity. <laughs> <laughs> Tickets are $8,000. <laughs> uh, to no one. Right. Yeah. If you don't live in New York City, th- this is like a hard thing to convey. Or city has corruption in it. <laughs> And sometimes the people have to launder the money. So every now and again, you'll be in a neighborhood where there's just a fully staffed, empty restaurant. There used to be one right by our office in Midtown. It was yeah. deeply confusing. No, it, I bet it'd be like, great. How are the deals? How, how, how is the food? No, you'd go in there and, and you'd be first of all, you'd be like, I should leave. Yeah. Like the vibes were immediately hostile. Like, yeah. Mm-mm, you're not ordering. And then you would order food and they'd be like, what? Well, <laughs> we don't know. We don't so like we, we have to go to like the grocery store and get you some chicken tenders. We'll yeah. be back. Opulent velocity. <laughs> All right. There's a lot happening this week. I'm your friend, Neil. Alex Kranz is here in studio. Yeah, we're back. I was going to say it's been a minute, it's but we were minute. just together in Texas. Yeah. All three of us. But it's been a minute since you and I were together in this studio. That's true. It's nice. It's a good energy. I'm having fun. And then David Pierce has banished to his basement once again. Yeah, cool. Thanks. It's really nice <laughs> to see you guys. <laughs> Feeling great. <laughs> How is it? I mean, it's it's a basement. I did nap over there earlier, so I'm feeling Ooh, great. Everything's, yeah. everything's going well today. Hell yes. My understanding is that we are soon to give you some sort of green screen experience where you Liam, can be anywhere. Liam is threatening to give me a background, but every time he threatens the background, <laughs> there's one more box involved. And so I think we're, we're now at either two or three boxes plus a six foot long green screen that lives under my couch. So uh, it's either going to happen and really change my life in a big way, or I'm just going to refuse to engage in this process any longer. We'll see. Look, I know Virtuous listeners have a uh, relationship with our producer, Liam, mostly because he's the person who makes us be on time, which we have defeated Liam. I just want to be clear that listeners plus hosts have defeated <laughs> Liam. But the way you know he's the right producer for the show is that when he's allowed to spend money on gadgets and gadget-related ideas... It's just out of control. Like oh. the, it goes all in. The studio that is being built at my house is fully out of control. It's sick. It's it, it's great. One, and one day we'll make Liam do the video where he's like, here's all the stuff I bought. Um, <laughs> oh, but studio it, tour. That's going to happen. Yeah. It's going to be great. It's a lot of stuff. And then I have ideas. <laughs> it's not It's not great. I would not say it's a cost-effective studio. But <laughs> it's, it's just a lot of stuff. It's great. I like to imagine you just never get out of your chair and you just sort of wheel – from set to set all day, <laughs> yeah. depending on what you're doing. You just Liam, kind of, like, Liam has threatened the to automate the studio, so you just push one button and like the shades go down and the lights turn on. I don't know that we can get there. You you totally can. Home assistant, right, Liam? It's going to be home assistant. It's going to be sick. I like how you just like try to get Liam to jump in. Come on, Liam, hop he's in. Not hop in. He's not doing it. He's like, no. He's hiding under the. No, table. he's got he's got ideas. <laughs> Yeah, he's not. He, I, we were waiting. <laughs> he just didn't show up. <laughs> he will not be baited. He's, he's very upset with us right now. I'm sorry. We love you, Liam. Liam is incredible. Everyone tweet at Liam. Okay. Good uh, things only. Now that we're on the high vibes. Yeah. There's a lot to talk about this week. Uh, there's a TikTok ban, which uh, we got to talk about a lot. Um, there's a bunch of streaming wars news. There's uh, Twitter, now X, pivoting to video. <laughs> It's a real 2012 idea. There's a new YouTube app. And then we got a lightning round. There's all kinds of stuff going on. Oh, Starship had its third launch, which appears to be totally successful. That happened only minutes before we started recording. So I'm saying that. And we'll see if it landed by the time we (laughs) get to talking about it. It's going to be great. But we should start with TikTok, which is undoubtedly the news of the week. It is very confusing, very stressful. And I have promised to have the hottest take of all. But first, David, do you want to tell us what's going on on TikTok? Sure. So the very short version of what has now become a very long story is that after in 2021 deciding not to ban TikTok, 
Congress has decided once again that it, it would very much like to ban TikTok. So there is this bill called the Protecting Americans from Foreign Adversary Controlled Applications Act, which just really rolls off the tongue. Mm. And what it essentially does is block uh, app stores from hosting TikTok and it blocks internet hosting providers from hosting TikTok. And there are a million complications and nuances in that that we should talk about. But the idea is essentially to either ban TikTok outright or force it to be sold to an American company or a company at least not owned by a foreign adversary, which is a technical term that only a few countries qualify under. So it went through committee. I believe it passed in a House committee 50 to zero. 50 went, to zero. Yeah. yeah. And then it went to the broader house where it passed with like 80% yes, which was a huge, ridiculous victory in a time where nothing passes with numbers like that. So now this bill is sitting in front of the Senate. Uh, President Biden has said that if it is passed to him, he will sign it into law. There is essentially now one step remaining between us and a TikTok ban. And it's a big step. And there are lots of good reasons to believe it will never surmount that step. Yeah, because it's it's Rand Paul, right? Like the step is Rand Paul. <laughs> Senator the, Rand the Paul. The Senate. Overall. Yeah. It's Rand Paul and it's Chuck Schumer. And there are there are a lot of people in the Senate who have reasons not to make this happen, right? But it right. is we are much closer to a TikTok ban than we have ever been before, to the point where a lot of people inside TikTok and outside TikTok think it's gonna happen. All right, so can I quibble with you on one thing? Please. Mm. And it is just the most pedantic thing. But why are, Why are else are we here? Yeah. The idea that it's a ban on TikTok specifically, like, conflates too many ideas. Can I read you the first sentence of the bill, Eli? Yeah. To protect the national security of the United States from the threat posed by foreign adversary controlled applications, such as TikTok. <laughs> it's the only app they name in the bill. This is a TikTok ban. <laughs> sure. And it's the only app specified later in the bill. Right. But it, but the mechanism by which it is accomplishing that goal is not actually by banning TikTok. And I think that's, that's important. If you want to understand the dynamics of this bill and the people arrayed for and against it, what might actually happen with TikTok, it's a bill that regulates app stores and internet service providers. It yes. does not regulate TikTok at all. Like nothing in this bill requires TikTok to do anything. It requires a bunch of other companies to do stuff that will make it impossible for TikTok to do business here. And I think when we have all these conversations about the 170 million Americans who use TikTok and free speech and all these businesses, it's all as though the government is regulating TikTok. But it is, but very specifically and very mechanically in this bill, it is not doing that. It is making it impossible for TikTok to do business in the United States. And you might think that is the same thing. And you are. I'm sure people have a lot of like feelings about what I'm saying. But it, if you just read the language of the bill, the bill does not regulate. To, it says TikTok for political expediency, but it doesn't actually regulate TikTok directly. It just says these other companies cannot do business with TikTok. And I think that's actually really important. It's also the only way to do it. Like you, you can't argue that TikTok is a company owned and run by China and then say the U.S. government can regulate it. Like you just can't have it both ways. This is the only way to get to TikTok if you want to get to TikTok. No, there are, there are other ways to do it. I, some of those ways have succeeded in the courts and some of them have failed. Like over time, we are capable of regulating how foreign companies do business in the United States. For example, uh, foreign companies are not really allowed to own like broadcast licenses in the United States. So if you want to set up a CBS tower in New York City – you can't go get a bunch of Saudi money to do it. We we seem to be fine with that. I just and I just want to put that out there. Like there are some very direct regulations that we have over media ownership in this country. And then there, there's this bill, which is like Apple can't do business with TikTok. And it's actually different. And the reason I'm poking at that really hard is because I think the rhetoric on both sides of this has gotten one turn too simplistic. Right? Mm. On on the we should ban it side. It's like, this is a danger to the United States. And then you're like, so what are you going to do about it? And they're like, we're going to tell Apple what to do. Weird. <laughs> weird. Just like straightforwardly weird. And on the other side, it's like, you're infringing our free speech rights by banning TikTok. And then you look at the thing and it's like, oh, that is the third order outcome of this. But if what you're really doing is regulating Apple, you're doing also, so there's actually all these other outs, including you could sell TikTok, which as you point out, David, in 2021, like, 
boy, haven't we been through this before? Yeah. Like uh -huh. Microsoft was going to buy TikTok. Satya Nadella was like, this is the weirdest deal I've ever been a part of. Oracle has Project Texas and they, no one cares. Like the least, Alex is from Texas. This is the least anything named Texas has ever talked about itself. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's true. It's true. All the other Texans are really confused. What's <laughs> happening? Would you like how I got to that? Yeah, I do not. Oh no, let me take that back. Yeah, I I keep looking at this, and it's it's fundamentally just like the next step in the in the Chinese American trade war, right? Like this is just saying we don't want apps created in China that are popular functioning in the United States. Full stop. And and a few other countries, but but specifically China. And and so this is just an extension of that trade war. And I'm a little like taken aback by it. It does feel like like the TikTok stuff in particular has always felt vaguely xenophobic. It's always felt a little like, oh, we can't we can't have the Chinese do things here because America. And 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 but we we do also at the same time have this this quickly accelerating trade war that that was that was like in the background, and then Trump was like, let me lob the uh, the trade equivalent of a bomb into the mix. And and now this is it's not quite nuclear, but this is like a really significant moment in that trade war. And and they're just everybody is so focused on TikTok and ignoring the fact that you are fundamentally changing how the internet works in the United States and saying, no, we are actually going to build a wall. The way that China has a wall, the United States is going to have a wall. And some of this stuff, we've already said it about a lot of the technology that's coming out of China. And now they're going to say, yeah, and and also these apps. And you know, it worked when it was Huawei and it was phones and they didn't have a huge market share in the United States. And so it was like, oh, no, we lost Huawei. And like, that sucks because they have really good technology in their devices. And now we're like, they're going after TikTok and that's, and people suddenly care. All right, here it is. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I think it makes total sense for the United States government to not want Chinese ownership of a major media platform in this country. Like, yeah. It, it is sensible on its face. It was sensible on its face for us to not want a bunch of Huawei technology in our communications networks. Yep. And I, I, I agree with you. I think most people didn't have like strand brand affinity for Huawei. So when we would have FCC commissioners on the show, Jeffrey Starks was on the show being like, we got to rip and replace all the Huawei gear. Uh, no creator said anything. Right. <laughs> as far as I understand. <laughs> like maybe there was a Huawei powered creator campaign to be like, Save us. As far as I can tell. I think some people maybe around the phones. Yeah. I mean, they had the, 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 the phones. They had like the Leica. Yeah. Like, yeah. It so, cool. Mila, sure. in order to make that statement, you have to believe one of the two arguments that everybody makes against TikTok, which is either it is this like crucially important vessel through which China is collecting data about Americans, or it is how China is disseminating propaganda and influencing U.S. elections and making our children idiots. Which of those do you believe? The second one. Do you do you really? Yeah. On what evidence? None. I, just to be clear, cool. I, 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 I just just to be clear, this is gonna be a great podcast. And I, <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to like say I have much evidence. I think actually one of the problems in this entire situation is that the House Select Committee went into a secure briefing. They saw whatever evidence there was. And they walked out of that briefing and went and immediately to a vote and voted 50 to zero to pass this bill that would either get TikTok off the app stores or uh, force them to sell. With no dissension, no controversy, I was at South by Southwest. The, 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 the vibe I heard coming out of the briefing was Congress people saying, if you saw what we saw, you'd do it too. What did they see? I think they should be made to present that evidence to the American people. And yet. And yet they have not, right? And yet that evidence is also so persuasive that they voted 383 to whatever to pass the bill in the full house. And yet there's nothing. The evidence is so persuasive that Joe Biden's like, I'll, I'll, I'll sign it when it comes to my de desk. And yet no one has made the case. The thing that I'm saying based on no evidence is you should not let an adversary of the United States even have this capability. We didn't know if Huawei was actually spying on our communications networks by embedding hardware directly into the cell system. No one wants to take the chance, right? Like that seems silly. The problem, the problem I think with, with the argument of this is about protecting us from, from, from Chinese interests is that 
Meta still exists, a ton of other algorithmically driven social media platforms that are extraordinarily susceptible to propaganda still exist sure. in this country and function in this country. They're only going after TikTok, which means like Russia went and, and did a whole lot of stuff in 2016. And we have a whole lot of proof of that. And not a lot's changed on that front. Instead, we were just like, well, we're going to get rid of – Facebook's going to get rid of a news feed and we're, we're all going to be fine. And and, and Metastool is allowed to ex exist in the com country. So this is explicitly about China but feels like so wrongheaded in actually solving the problem because right now, OK, you say we, we kill TikTok in the United States. It goes away. China can just go to U.S. data brokers and get all that but that's same the, data. That's the first thing that David is saying, the data right. brokers thing. So this is why I ask about the two things, because I, I agree that I, I specifically think, mean the second one. But I think if but on that second turn, again, they can just go and send their their propaganda like right now. OK, they it's cool. They, they maybe just have a button on the algorithm and they can they can control the algorithm in a very direct way. Instead, they can now just send all of their their people, their their propaganda specialists and all of those folks. On to Meta, on to on to Threads, on to Instagram, on to X for the four people still there. They they, they can all they can send them all to all those other places, and that doesn't solve the problem. It just like it makes their lives just a little bit more difficult. And yeah, I, I just but that wait, it makes their lives a lot more difficult, vastly more okay. difficult. I do agree with that for all of their many many. Many faults. Yeah. <laughs> Mark Zuckerberg and Sundar Pichai and Elon Musk live in the United States. They operate United States companies. Right. Their kids live here. Mm -hmm. If the United States and China go to war, their kids will be at risk. The United States government has direct regulatory control over their companies. Their companies, again, you can argue about the merits of this as much as you want. Their companies comply with and often support the military right. activities of the United States. Right. I'm, I'm saying I have a problem with the idea that we are okay with algorithmically driven propaganda machines only when they're American. We are because of the fucking First Amendment, yeah. right? Like our government would love to sit down and directly regulate the algorithms of Meta and YouTube, mm -hmm. they would, in a heartbeat, they would do it in one second if they could, and the First Amendment stands in their way. And that's for good reason, right? You you tend to believe that Americans have the best interest of America at, at heart. Mm -hmm. And I don't even mean that in a directly patriotic way. I just mean like a, do you want the place where you live to get bombed? Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> very directly, like yeah. there's just a, a very individualistic impulse that is at, sort of at the heart of this. China is not that. China is, is an adversary to this country. It would like to destabilize this country in some way if it could gain an advantage. It does it militarily. It does it economically. We do it to them yep. straightforwardly. And I think TikTok users tend to believe that their individual experiences have no relation to that thing. Right. So I've watched a million TikTok videos from TikTokers who are outraged that they're, they're making the argument you're making. Yeah. Why, why would you regulate us when YouTube still exists or Meta? I mean, I think they should all not exist. I think algorithm, <laughs> algorithmically driven social feeds are a pox on on our country and and anybody who's culture. heard me talk knows that I agree. Yeah, with you. yeah. And um, so that's where I'm at with it. I, I don't disagree. Yeah. Uh, come directly to our website. It's theverge.com. You have an in, a personal relationship with me on that website. Um. Uh, and then send us money. Um, <laughs> sure, why not? Uh, there's, we, we make it very hard to send us money. We'll figure it out one day. Um, Venmo and Eli. Yeah. This is all just a pay in to Cash App me. I will make dance videos for you. <laughs> send Use Cash App. Um, uh, but what I'm getting at is just think about something as dumb as Stanley Cups. Mm -hmm. Stanley Cups are not an organic trend, right? The algorithmic fed a bunch of people a bunch of Stanley Cup content, and then more people were inspired to make Stanley Cup content, and then the world around us generated an infinite supply of Stanley Cup explainers. So many, and then that trend car. just died. You sound like somebody who like watched The Great Hack last night and is like, "There's somebody at a button saying it's Stanley." I don't think there's time. somebody. Like, at that's a button. not how it works. It's just not how it works. But that's not how, that's not how Stanley Cup works. <laughs> but why would you give a foreign power that capability inside the United States to even dream of having that button? A, 
TikTok would tell you that it absolutely has not given China that power inside of the United States. B, there's no evidence that it has. <laughs> well, I, look, I'm the I'm the one who said the government should show us that evidence. But just abstractly, what, why would you allow that to happen? Look, I'm going to read to you the Communications Act of 1934. Foreign it, investors are limited to 20% direct ownership of companies holding a broadcasting license and 25% ownership of a holding company if you have multiple broadcast licenses. Why did we think it was important to limit the ownership of the airwaves in the United States in 1934? Because we did not want foreign companies controlling what was broadcast to the majority of Americans. The impulse is exactly the same. I get it. The United States should probably explain why it's terrified of TikTok. I, I really think this is a huge miss on the part of the government. And if they cannot, they should back the hell off. I agree. But I'm I'm looking at, okay, just on its face, is it a problem that so many Americans are buffeted by algorithms that we do not have any transparency into? And at least one of them, one very important one, potentially has an enemy of the United States like controlling it. And all that stands in between that is like Tim Cook. Tim Cook is like iPhones are really important to everyone. Do not do the do not do a war. Right. And like that's what got us through the Trump trade war in a, a real way. It's basically the idea of that the modern global peace is that we will all be so economically tied up with each other that war will be bad. I don't know if you looked around recently, like kind of shaky. <laughs> like, <laughs> like more shaky than it's been in a long time. And I would just point out, like, on either side, none of these cases are proven. TikTok saying we don't do it, great, you got to prove a negative. Very difficult. Huawei also said that a lot. And Huawei said a lot. And, you know, what most Western companies are like, we just don't want your hardware embedded in our networks. And I, I, that, to me, always felt, like, very obvious. Like, don't put their hardware in your networks. That's where you get ORAN from, by the yep. way. This is, like, a whole thing. Um, this, and this was what led to Pro Project Gen 5, sis. Um, <laughs> Look, I'm not saying you should ban it or you should uh, uh, keep the app stores from having it. I, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm still thinking about how, like, Chinese trade war led to Project Gen 5. <laughs> Straight line. Oh, it oh. absolutely did. Yeah. Uh, I've seen the meme of the guy with, the, like, the little ghost. But I'm saying if you're a TikTok user and you're outraged because they're going to do this, it's like, think about your experience on TikTok. You are being shown things that you are not in control of their sequence of their content, like, it just happens to you. And the number of TikTok trends that come and go because people on the app decide to participate in them and then our understanding of the culture around us is absolutely, it absolutely has the potential to be controlled by a foreign party. Okay, that, I, I don't think that that is, the, I don't think the United States government has no business in paying attention to that. Should they lay out the evidence, the American people, that, this is the only solution. They, they should. Is the evidence strong enough such that 50 Democrats and Republicans in a room saw it and walked out and voted unanimously? That's weird. That doesn't happen a lot anymore. Like, it's just weird. No, it doesn't. But it is also true that the only two things anyone agrees on in politics right now are China is bad and we must protect the children on the Internet. And if you want to gin up a 50 to zero vote, you would pick one of those two things. That's just what you would do. And and on anything, you're like, oh, we love kids, right? Like 50 to zero is pretty, it's not that hard to do on that front. Like this is just what I challenge at. you to go do it. It's, okay. Like, even COSA, like COSA, the most we protect the kids is not passing right now. But the Kids Online Safety Act is not. Yeah, because not that involves through. actually doing things. <laughs> and, and Congress is not big on actually doing things. But wait, but like I, I'm, I'm still hung up on this thing where like, okay, 10 cents. A company that is also headquartered in China and has, I would say, much clearer ties to the Chinese Communist Party than maybe not ByteDance, but certainly TikTok. And I think the like is is TikTok ByteDance and is ByteDance TikTok is a very interesting and still sort of unanswered question in a lot of ways that we should probably talk about. But Tencent owns, I think, if not all, almost all of Riot Games, which makes League of Legends, which is a very popular game, including in the United States. Uh, it owns a significant part of Epic, which makes Fortnite. Uh, can you convincingly prove to me that there is a better chance of me seeing Chinese propaganda on TikTok than in Fortnite? Yes. How? Fortnite doesn't have any news in it. Fortnite is not the main news source for millions of young Americans. 
in the middle of an election year. I think I mean a that assumes that millions of young Americans have a news source or give one solitary shit about the news and I don't think that they do <laughs> and so but like leaving that aside there is potential sure in the absolute worst case scenario that one can possibly imagine bad things can happen on TikTok granted in the absolute worst case scenario China already owns Yahoo News and we don't even know about it like we're we're arguing about these like insane hypotheticals and we don't know anything and we're just mad at China. Like, I, I don't know how to make it less simple than that. Right. But I'm saying a majority of the members of the House of Representatives took a bunch of phone calls from their constituents and still voted to pass this bill because of whatever they saw. No, disagree. They took a bunch of calls from their constituents and so as a result voted. The the overwhelming takeaway from members of Congress from this huge phone bank thing that TikTok has been encouraging users to do is, see, this proves our point. TikTok can make young yes. people do whatever they want, so we have to ban it. Yep. This thing has backfired so spectacularly on TikTok in the funniest possible way. They it convinced so young people to make phone bad. calls. And everybody was like, oh, my God, they can make young people make phone calls. They can do anything. <laughs> Right, like, but, but, That's the only evidence of propaganda that we actually have from TikTok is that they can make people make phone calls. I want to point out that is indeed very funny. Like it is very funny. Uh, I think mostly because TikTok didn't think anything would happen like this. And then they overplayed their hand. Yes. Weird. But the idea that you can get a bunch of young people to take political action in service of a company that is owned by the Chinese government should not feel like a backfire when people are like, well, that's bad. You can't just say a service run by the Chinese government like it's a thing that we know. You just you just said that so nonchalantly. But by dance, the Chinese company has the Chinese government supported right. Like it's just true. Like co companies in China are structured differently than the companies here, and the sure. state interests are much stronger for those companies. And if they don't like you, they just make you go away, which is a thing that happens to Chinese companies. Poor Fan Bingbing. That's Bing. true. Yeah, right. Like Jack Ma is like, where'd that guy go? He just disappeared. <laughs> Like, that's weird. Like, that is a different, like, a, a crucial difference between the United States government and Chinese government. The Chinese government is a brutal dictatorship. Yeah, I mean, this is this is the this is the thing we, we saw with Huawei and, and we're seeing again in, in this case that I think isn't always entirely articulated because racism gets in the way and xenophobia gets in the way, which is that, like, this pro the problem isn't that it's China and China bad because that that's just racist and xenophobic. The problem is that the Chinese Communist Party, the CCP, has a very capable way of making businesses that are in China do what they want. And they can exert influence and they will exert influence and they have exerted influence. And in TikTok's case, TikTok has gone again and again and again and said they do not do that. We are not based there. We we we, we work really, really hard to not have that relationship. And effectively, the United States government has said, we don't believe you. Right, because you made up Project Texas. Yeah. <laughs> and then when the chips are down, no one is talking about Project Texas. Yep. They, they made up this fake thing, which is like Oracle hosts the data. And there's a we wrote about it. Alex Heath wrote about it. He visited the Algorithmic Transparency Center, which is basically a children's museum for content moderation, where you stand in front of a giant TikTok screen. And you're like, ban this. Don't ban that. And then behind that is like a wall with yeah. a data center behind it that you can gaze upon. And you're like, look at the data. It's here in the United States. And none of that has anything to do with anything as, as near as we can tell. Right. Yeah. I, I think I think TikTok is always it, it's always going to face this battle because unfortunately it is owned by a company that does is based in China and therefore cannot fully say we are totally independent company like ByteDance can just not do that. It never can. It never will as long as the CCP is, is, is staying in its current like regime. And and so TikTok is always going to face that. And they have they have really struggled to to convince the, the government. At every turn, they've struggled, and part of that is definitely the xenophobia and 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 the racism, which is just like completely out of pocket and horrible. Yes, every I, single I fully time. agree there. Horrible, and I just I don't know that TikTok can ever say anything that is going to make them believe them. Like even if they if even if Project Texas wasn't so stupidly transparently like TikTok propaganda to say like us, I don't know what they could do to make. The United States government like them. Yeah. Can I say something Can they do vastly anything? more esoteric and philosophical? Just to turn this yeah, yeah, yeah. somewhere else. Uh, 
as I've gotten older, mm -hmm. I've realized the thing that the internet does is make everyone believe that collective action problems do not exist. Which is, if you if you just take that idea and apply it to whatever your political leanings are, you will quickly realize, like, this is your primary frustration with other people. It's like, some problems are easier to solve if we all do them together. But getting everyone to do everything at the same time is like a political nightmare. Yeah. And that's just life. That's That's the history of politics. Do collective action problems exist or not? Is it? If I'm like, the market will provide fighter jets, it won't unless we all pay our taxes and the government buys fighter jets. And we need it, we think we should have fighter jets for X, Y, and Z reason. And you personally might disagree with those reasons. And you personally might sue the government of the United States and say, I do not want my taxes to pay for fighter jets, which is a real thing that happens on the regular. And the United States government says, no, you don't get a choice because of collective act. Like, we have to do this thing together. And you might think to yourself, Boy, I wish we would pull our taxes and pay for health care. I very strongly believe we should pull our taxes and pay for health care for people or better education or whatever it is that you think would be better if we all paid a little bit and we all got a lot, right? This is like the main thing. And what is happening in this TikTok situation is TikTok is a collective action problem. Mm -hmm. Our government believes the security of the United States is threatened by the existence of TikTok in some way. Our government says that. It believes it. It's taking the votes that it, it indicate its belief in that problem. Sure. I would remind you that you're the same Neil I. Patel who believes most of the things that Congress does are like deeply disingenuous and not at all about the thing that they say that they're about. I, I cannot believe I'm the one making this case. I I'm can't just, either. I'm, I'm just like, saying I'm this to you now. I'm losing my mind right now. I have never, I just the, the 50 to 0 vote, I think just really, there's something about that. Like they saw the evidence, they walked out, they all did the same thing at the same time. I do time. agree that that is the single most compelling I, piece of I've just got it circled in my so brain. That Whatever happened there is a big deal. I, I don't know what it is. And that is the problem. Yep. To overcome the collective action problem they have, which is they're going to make a bunch of individuals feel bad. Yep. A bunch of individual businesses will lose their marketing channel. A bunch of individual creators will lose their livelihoods. A bunch of individual people will lose their ability to just see trucks jump over shit on command. This will hurt me personally. Mm -hmm. To overcome the collective action problem, they have to lay out the case. But it is clear that they think if we all endure that pain, collectively, we will get some benefit. And the benefit will be freedom from Chinese interference in our media. I don't like that's the case. And when you take that and you're like, now I will make the same case against Facebook or the same case against YouTube. I would point out to you, the government has been trying to make that case. They haul these CEOs in front of the government and say, why are your algorithms bad? And the CEOs are like, yeah, I don't know, First Amendment, go away. Like, they cannot overcome that. They have yet to come up with an argument that is strong enough to overpower the First Amendment and solve that collective action problem. They have not yet figured it out. The closest they've come is the kids stuff. That's why you have a Kids Online Safety Act. The closest they've come is sex trafficking. That's why you get FOSTA and SESTA as carve-outs to 230. That's it. The closest, actually, the, the, the farthest they've gone is copyright law. <laughs> Right. Like that's why Disney gets to take stuff down off the Internet, because we've decided is collectively that's fine. And most people don't argue with that. In this case, they have a different thing that they can't wield against the Facebooks and the, and the YouTubes of the world, which is like national security. And they have to make the case. And I, they've had one kind of sham hearing mm -hmm. where they just asked, like, that's your xenophobia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where they just like, we're like, are you Singaporean? He's like, I am Singaporean. <laughs> yeah, like, like, that doesn't work. Um, they asked the dude if TikTok uses Wi-Fi. <laughs> Truly like, a like, horrible That theory. isn't the case. But the, some case was made to these people where they are willing to take the representative democracy hit, right? Where their own constituents are calling them and they're interpreting that as this is the problem. And I'm going to vote against what my constituents are saying to me. Can I put on That my... happens in, like very rarely. I think you might be underrating the extent to which it's a political win to be mad at China right now. No way. I disagree. I think banning TikTok is a political loser for everyone, which is why Donald Trump is out there being like, no, I'll, I'll, I'll keep TikTok. Kids, vote for me, Donald Trump. Yeah. Oh, I totally agree with that. But there, there is a, a subset of people who are older and don't use TikTok and hate China, which is a lot of people in America who are going to be psyched about this. And so it's like th there are... 
the if if you're just taking this as like pure political calculus and like this is not the thing we should get hung up on but if you're taking this as just pure political calculus the tiktok users aren't going to vote anyway the old people who hate china well god they love voting like that's <laughs> you know, and, and this is the thing wait, like wait, wait, I'm so, I, can i can i offer you one thing this is unsourced it's half assed i'm sorry uh i definitely heard at southwest southwest that a significant number of people making the phone calls were boomers who spend all day on tiktok oh the boomers love tiktok I, I say that because they, I have they got nothing. To, they got nothing to do. Talk about They're all retired. Mind. Yeah, <laughs> sitting on their bags of money but that they have yet to pass I, on. I want to point out. I think you guys are both focused really a lot on the the political side of this and and not on the economic side of this. Yeah. Which is TikTok goes away. Suddenly, all those American companies that are are largely dominant in the social media space across the world, right? Like, you know, like I think I was reading today that an enormous portion of the the famous people on social media are, are based in America because they use American apps like yeah. YouTube and, and Instagram. If TikTok goes away, YouTube and Instagram immediately get more users. Like there is real economic incentive to get rid of TikTok because that oh, puts yeah. money back into American companies. But they and could I just think, sell it. And I think this is also part of like the lobbying that is happening here. Like like we're seeing, oh, they went and they, they all got convinced in, in some hearing that we didn't all – weren't privy to, but they were also getting convinced by lobbyists from from Meta and lobbyists from from Google saying, "Yeah, you want you want to get rid of our com- competition, go for it." And and I, I, we we can't ignore that like the the economic part component of this thing because it's it's huge. Oh, I totally agree. And all these companies have had a big stock bump in the last week since this started to happen. Like. Snap is sitting there being like, please, dear God, ban TikTok. <laughs> Some people will come use Snap Discover. If Snap was smart, they would buy it. That's what I'm saying. Like, the, maybe a go away. Yeah. But maybe Steve Mnuchin will put together his band of investors and buy it. <laughs> Who is the other name that got floated? Bobby Kotick. Kotick. Bobby Kotick. Yeah, Activision's back, baby. When I when I think about responsible media ownership in the United States. The way that Chuzi Chu, the CEO of TikTok, has talked about it, it that seems like a total non-starter. Like, I, I don't think there's any world in which TikTok sells. He has to say that. But also the like who literally who could afford it? Like this is this is probably a several hundred billion dollar company. Microsoft's back at it. You can't sell to any of the big companies for antitrust reasons. Uh who else has the money? Snapchat doesn't have money. Literally TikTok could buy Snapchat. I don't know, man. Elon put together 44 billion for Twitter. <laughs> You think, okay, Elon, if you buy TikTok and take it private <laughs> and rebrand TikTok as X videos, now we're on to something. I, oh. I, I understand it's a huge number. I just think that the opportunity for a bunch of investors to get that company and that advertising revenue and that influence, it's not such a big number for the thing that it is. It's yes, a it's a very big, big number. big number. Well, we don't know what the number is. But oh, so they're, that's they're, the unknown you're not okay with. I just I just think from you're not gonna be like you were open to a sale while you're still trying to fend off the bill that would force you to sell it. Sure. Agreed. And at some point there becomes a number like everything has a number. It's a business. Yeah. Capitalism, baby. Welcome to America. I mean, and it is true that like we got a ways down this road in 2020 based on an executive order that pretty much everybody thought had no chance of holding up in court. Um and like that's I think the thing that is different now. I think there there is a real sense that this is a thing that could happen and could stick. And so to the extent that uh, you know, Oracle talked about it and Microsoft talked about it, and there were all of these weird machinations going on, I think everybody kind of knew it was probably nothing, but it seems to be much more likely to be something. And so we might get a real price tag at some yeah. point here in the future. Look, all I'm saying, I'm I don't I don't think it will end up getting banned i think it'll end up getting sold oh i think the opposite that's so fun oh well we'll see i don't know that's yeah. a good that's a good virtual prop bet um i think nothing will happen i think Rand paul a <laughs> few other senators because they can kill it right like like you do need it was what 60 senators have to all agree and oh boy yeah i i'm i'm with you i think the massive like betting favorite is nothing we never hear from this bill again yeah, yeah. i fair enough but we i just, will say there are uh, in i have a long History of producing work about the first amendment. You can go I know, and you're throwing to it. it all away in one <laughs> verse cast. You can episode. definitely it's go incredible. listen to it. I feel very strongly about the first <laughs> amendment. There are a tiny handful of things that overcome the first amendment. 
co- copyright law, as you may be aware, <laughs> based uh-huh. on my long body of work. Uh-huh. Uh, national security is one of those things. Foreign ownership of United States media is historically one of those things. And I think that's gotten lost in all this conversation. This is why I'm so focused on like how mechanics of how the bill actually works. Yeah. Because that thing is actually important. Wait, even so- if you even if you believe they're not using it now, should they have that capability? Has you traditionally been so big of a deal that we've stopped it before it could even happen. And in this case, we just let it slide because it's an app with dancing kids on it. Yeah. I, I mean, and if if you believe that there is a nefarious thing happening here, that is the true genius of TikTok, right? That like like the the galaxy brain thing you hear is like all the kids in China are seeing on Duyin, which is like the Chinese version of TikTok. They're seeing like STEM and how to build robots and code and all this stuff. And we're just seeing dance challenges because it's making us all stupid and slow. And this is like a long con plan to make the Chinese kids smarter than the American kids, which like, if true, incredible, like well played. Everybody. <laughs> uh, My favorite. Conspiracy. That's why they added the I STEM tab to tiktok by the way i know it's, like this it, is the I, and I, I just want to point out it's right behind shopping first it's shopping <laughs> then <Right>. it's stem <laughs> like right. yeah but i think Look, the, the, the one thing i'm hung up on like just i i agree with you about the 50 to zero thing and i think the idea that there is a smoking gun is very possible and i'm so willing to be convinced by yeah any shred of evidence that says this is happening there are plans to make it happen there is capability to do it quickly like whatever the flip side of it for me is we've been at this for four years now and we've never heard it. And there are so, so many people with incentive to talk about this publicly. Like so many people. Yeah. But why won't they? Well, I don't know. They like, get it. They I, won't have talk. you met politicians. They, they usually talk. About it. This is what I'm saying. So <laughs> either it is something so grave and incredible that we can't be trust. It's like it's like some alien shit. We're like, we can't know <laughs> or else it would destroy our way of life. Wait. Or there's nothing to talk about. Like, I, I don't know how to think it's not one of usually those. Usually when things. there's nothing, they make shit up. I just historically with politicians, usually when there's then there's nothing, you know, it's like. They pull off the sheet and the Scooby-Doo kids are like, it was bullshit all along. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like that's his, the, I don't know. Maybe that's it. Maybe I'm just over indexing on 50 to zero and the fact that so many of them were convinced by this campaign and there's something there that they won't say. What if yeah. this is all viral marketing for three body problems? <laughs> Very good. Netflix uh, just really going for it this year. Yeah. We could see. Who knows? Uh, look, <laughs> I I think I've been convinced through the course of the conversation that most likely outcome is nothing. Yeah. Uh, exactly. That's but, what Netflix wants you to think. And, <laughs> and I, I really do think, and I can't say this more clearly, the government needs to show us its evidence before it takes this action. Yes. We have not seen it. That is, if you take away one thing from this conversation, it's me saying the government needs to show us this evidence before it takes the action. But it's crazy that the evidence apparently exists right. such that they voted 50 to zero. Yeah, you seem more convinced than ever that there is evidence, uh, which I think is fair. Like, what we've seen in the last seven days would indicate that some people have seen some things. I think that's fair. But I just am, I don't think we should take that on faith. I think Americans should own American algorithms. That's it. I, I, think, that, I think that comes down to it. Like No algorithms. Well, I mean, Band if you them. really ask me, yeah. <laughs> I think we should get rid of the algorithmic media and go start, bring back RSS. Yeah. A bill to bring back RSS in the United States. Vote Patel. That's what they uh, should do. Just put TikTok on the Fediverse. It solves all of our problems. <laughs> Everything will be fine. But barring that, I think it's pretty, it, it is, it just feels reasonable to me that what people see and consume should be, a, they sh- the, the people who are accountable for that should be here. A closer to you. You know who would agree with that argument is the Communist Party of China. And also most people. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think most governments are very interested in making sure that their citizens see something that comes from within. That's pretty natural. And again, this, I think, just comes back to everything we've been talking about, which is, do you do you think that you are like an individual in a sea of individuals or that you are part of a collective? And I think the internet makes everybody feel very alone in that particular way. And, and like almost every political problem comes back to that. I'm just thinking about what happens if we get like, everybody's like, oh, no, you're right. Like we need to own our own media. And then we get like the BBC version of TikTok and like the NHK version of TikTok, like the national <laughs> broadcastings yeah. for, for, company, for countries. 
but for TikTok. I mean, NPR, I think, has a TikTok account. Just imagine that. I want, yeah. Like what's their so, what's what the want. NPR social media <laughs> app look like? I want to see it. Well, is get it just on podcast? It. Is it just the Apple podcast? It's just app? that voice. <laughs> All right, we should take a break. Uh, you, everyone can yell at me in the comments. Uh, also, just tell us what you think. We have a hotline. I just want to say, I think it's. I actually think I do want people to reach out. You should call the hotline eight six six verge one one. You should email us vergecast at the verge com. But if I had to bet. I think most people are going to agree with you, Neli. I think it is is—it is just my brain is so broken by the fact that you are the one making this argument. <laughs> I think it's a perfectly fair argument. We're all sort of arguing based on evidence that no one has. And fundamentally, you have to trust somebody. And I think ultimately saying the I, I choose to not trust China is like not an unreasonable place to be. I just can't believe you're the one saying all of this. But I'll, I'll, I'll get there. I'll settle down. It'll be okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. What, what's the... It's a line of foolish consistency is little minds. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Whatever that quote is. I'm real smart <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, let us know. I, look, I've been reading our own comments. I think most of our commenters believe I'm like stridently opposed to this ban. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. Uh, probably because I haven't said anything about it until now. I think the United States government owes us this evidence. That's like the main thing I think. But apart from that, I think it's reasonable to say like, our media ownership should be more local. Show us the tapes. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're Band Clear that. Channel next. All right. We got to go to break. <laughs> we'll be right back with more Verge Cast. <laughs> Welcome back. All right. I want to tell Alex and David a story about the studio. Oh, it's, Lord. It's looking around in the break and mm-hmm. things have moved. And I, I know why they've moved. And it's very funny. So The Verge is part of Vox Media. Mm -hmm. As you may know, Mm -hmm. Uh, Vox Media has a podcast network called the Vox Media Podcast Network. On the Vox Media Podcast Network is a very good podcast called Point Forward with Andre Iguodala and Evan Turner, Mm -hmm. who are basketball players. I'm assuming most people know that, but if you don't, they're basketball players. Now I know. They're very tall and very famous. They do the podcast in the same studio we're in, and they they redress it with their stuff. Are they the reasons it smells like weed all the time? (laughs) No. Different podcasts. Does this explain why my seat sometimes <laughs> changes height? I think it, it explains the sense. chair moving. I don't, they record on Mondays and it would be incredible yeah. if on Thursdays. <laughs> so I'm just going to say no to that okay. one. Call me okay. if, if you <laughs> smoke that much weed. We'll hang out. <laughs> that's, that's different. Uh, but for the, so they redress the studio for their show, which makes sense. Mm-hmm. And then we have to put our stuff back. But I think they didn't notice it for the first few they did in here so the Heine cube yeah is behind them <laughs> why would they get rid of that it's so cool yeah i think we should play nba well it was before 2k like nba 94 on the <laughs> Heine cube i think jam probably existed on the on the Heine cube Ooh, right, I don't think I'm, it did. here's my official pitch for a vox media podcast network crossover i will play nba jam on a gamecube with andre <laughs> sounds amazing we have a gamecube yeah your move, Andre. <laughs> we have long promised that we will get together and do, and Dave and I will play Madden, and we just are never in the same place at the same time with the GameCube. Like, we've been in the same place at the same time without a GameCube. Mm-hmm. Both of us have been in this room with the GameCube, but without the other person. We're going to figure out all three elements at the same time. I think you need some more elements, like a, a plug. <laughs> yeah, we have a controller. controller like... uh, a copy of Madden. Yeah, that's mm. like... Critical elements. Some other stuff has to happen. Uh, just once on on point forward, I want these NBA superstars to be like, "Is that a Heineken game key?" <laughs> I've been searching for. <laughs> You're like, yes. it's like I'm on eBay all the time looking for one of those. <laughs> it's very good. Uh, that show's great. You should listen to it. They just had uh, Megan Rapino on at South by with them, uh, which was wonderful. Nice. Yeah. All right. Speaking of media, huh? That's your segue. Uh, boy, there's a bunch of media streaming news this week. One correction I have to issue for the audience. In our streaming draft, this is true. I won. I, okay, so I have long since been claiming that I won. I think given this piece of news, I definitively lost. <laughs> Even though I think I had the best lineup, I think this is an instant DQ. What happened to Motor Trends? I picked as my niche streaming service. So David set up the draft. We had to pick player in every category. 4K awards. Alex has an expansive definition of what counts as award-winning yeah, streaming service. Correct. Uh live, all these things. And the last one was niche. Mm -hmm. And I candidly blanked on stage. And I was like, I don't know. I have enough. Like I picked TikTok. I'm good. (laughs) You know, like 
even though it's going to get you know banned from app stores like i'll take it for now i want to ban tiktok i'm going to pick it first <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah. the point is to be confounding <laughs> never let them know what's coming uh so i blanked on stage and i picked what my father-in-law had been watching at my home mm -hmm. before i left for south by southwest which is motor trend tv and we published the streaming draft and youtube commenters are like the shit went 92 weeks ago. <laughs> oh, no. Like it was killed two weeks ago. So uh, first of all, Motor Trend TV was long gone. It was yeah. called Motor Trend Plus. <laughs> There's a rebrand. And now it's being shuttered oh, and boy. being folded into Discovery Plus. Oh. Which is where all of us learn about house flipping and going to car auctions. Yeah. Have you checked on your father-in-law? How's he holding up? You know, we haven't brought it up. Uh, it just wasn't one of those things. I... Is he, he's just watching like cached videos on, <laughs> yeah. on the TV. Yeah, you know we're just gonna let. Yeah, I you mean, don't want to. You don't want to roll to a family member and be like, "You have to watch Discovery Plus now." Like, <laughs> I think I, the app still works for a while. I think the app is still gonna work for a while. Uh, it's yeah. uh, nope, that's not even right. It's closing in fourteen <laughs> days. <laughs> Super, oh, super oh, isn't man. gonna work for a while. Ooh, uh, he's got some time. He's he's got time. He can he can record it with his phone. Yeah, Are I'm just saying. Episodes? Look, I I think overall I had the best, mm. the best suite. But I do think picking an already dead service <laughs> like an instant DQ. Yeah. Like if you pick a thing that's gone ninety, you're out the draft. Netflix is next, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was the real takeaway is Netflix is super dead really yeah. soon. Yeah. Any minute now, don't you worry. It's coming. I do think my ability to pick a, an already dead streaming service distracted from your bold prediction that Netflix would die soon. It didn't. I had friends messaging me being like, I heard the podcast Netflix, Alex. What the hell? And I'm, I'm like, look. Out of your mind. I, I, think, I think Paramount Plus Netflix. No, I don't actually. <laughs> <I'm very clear. laughs> say. All right, let's talk about some news. RIP to Motor Trend TV. Uh, real one. Yeah, uh, bitch and rides. Where will you live now? That's a real show, by the way. It'll live. It'll live on Discovery Plus. It's true. Yeah, you're, you'll be fine. Which will then be part of Max, which will eventually be merged with Paramount Plus. Yes. One way or another, you're going to watch Bitch and Rides. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it will find you. you. Don't you worry. I have a lot to say about that show, but I think I think it's a very limited audience for criticism of Bitch and Rides. I've watched a lot of it with my father-in-law. Okay. Actual news. Mm -hmm. TV news. By the way, here's the, dis the disclosure. We'll just get them all the way. Uh, we mentioned Netflix. I was at EP on a Netflix show called The Future Of. Uh, NBC is an investor in our company. They run the Peacock service, which, if you believe Alex, will far outlive Netflix. <laughs> I'm right. I'm right. Don't worry about it. I'm right. <laughs> uh, yeah, our company makes Full Swing, the golf show on Netflix. That's pretty good. Uh, that's it. Those are disclosures today. There, I'm sure there are more. I believe wired connections are better than wireless ones. RIP Starlink. Mm -hmm. That's just a fact. I say that because the Starlink people think that I'm in the pocket of big Comcast. <laughs> yeah. That's a real. I say I, it that still all the comes time. up. Yeah, I, that's what I thought. They're like he's in big Ethernet's pocket. <laughs> all right, uh, actual news. Yeah, YouTube is revamping its TV app, not YouTube TV, but the YouTube app on TVs. I have a question about this. Yeah. Who is not watching in full screen? What <laughs> what people are like? Mm, I want to watch like with the ads and crap all around it. Who are they? This is everyone's dream is to make QVC. Well, it's that. That is half of it. I firmly agree with that. That like the goal is to let you point at something on your television and it just appears at your house the next day. Like that is literally what everyone who makes TV stuff wants. The only dream that anyone has ever had. Yeah, truly. Yeah. Uh, the other half of it is YouTube has been on this very long quest to get youtube onto televisions in like a more youtube -y way right like youtube has talked for years now about how the tv is the fastest growing youtube platform like it's it's now to the point that i just laugh whenever they put that in a press release because it's like yeah it's been that way for like a decade now uh but the problem with that is there are lots of things about youtube that people like that are not just watching the video right like there's all this community stuff comments are very important recommendations are very important you want to subscribe. Like it's harder to subscribe to a channel from your television than it is from your phone or your computer. And that is actually a threat to YouTube over time 
as its stuff gets bigger, right? So yeah. they've been on this thing forever to figure out, like, how do we let you use YouTube while also watching something on your television? And their step for a long time was to connect it better to your phone. Like, you know how they have the thing now where you're watching YouTube on your TV and you open up YouTube on your phone, and that little thing pops up that's like, do you want to connect? First of all, that feature rules, and mm -hmm. thank you to YouTube for doing it. But that was their big plan. And I think that's how they thought they were going to solve it, right? Like, they were like, we're going to be both the first and the second screen simultaneously. This to me feels like them saying that's not really working. And so actually what we need to do is put more stuff more accessible on the big screen in front of you. So they have this new thing where in, it's full screen by default, I think. Yeah. But you can press a button and it will the, the video will shrink. And then on the right side, you'll get some of the metadata, the description and the comments. And like you know, I said, a list of the products in the video. It'll look more like seeing YouTube in like a desktop browser. To me, that feels like a reasonable thing to do and also like yeah. the most obvious thing. They're like, what if we just did YouTube on your television? It's like, yeah, that's the one. But it does feel like they're saying this thing where we're going to connect it to your other devices and you're going to be able to do it all simultaneously maybe is not actually the answer the way they thought. It kind of feels like they pulled a Vizio. Oh, God. And went, oh, you know what? Actually, people don't want to control their TV viewing experience from their phone. Vizio was like, yeah. That's what you meant. I was worried. There was any number of other bad any things. Other I no, no, no. I'm, I'm thinking very clearly because I just, I have the 26 Vizio TV <laughs> and I put it in the guest room and I have a, somebody staying over and I was like, oh, I have to like, where's the remote? Yeah, I have this, to give you an Android tablet. And I was like, you just have to use your regular phone. I'm sorry. And, and it feels like, like. I refuse to buy a $29 Roku to solve this problem. <laughs> it's true. No, it's because I couldn't find it. It's in another box. <laughs> but I don't know where anything is. But but yeah, this just feels like the same thing where, where people are starting to realize, wait, actually the phone is not the best way to do this. And sometimes you just want to watch this and interact with it with a remote because remotes are probably the best way to control TVs because they've worked yeah forever yeah and the idea that you'll own both a first and second screen is like the dream like you'll watch up there and shop down here and it's like people do that all the time but they don't no we watch wanna... up there and we tick tock down here yeah. for uh, now i think this entire story is explained by one quote from the blog post uh -huh. just one and the image that youtube supplied in that blog post mm. so the quote from the blog post the design changes started with, quote, the idea of reducing the size of the video player and simplifying the interactions. I hate it. But it's just like, we're just going to make the video player smaller because we have, everyone has long thought that the TV is like the lean back. You just put up the video and you're done and you're going. And now they're realizing, oh, this is just an Android tablet on your wall. What if we just let you control it like an Android tablet instead of saying all the interactivity happens on your phone, which yeah. is what you're saying. Yeah. But that first one, we're just going to make the video player smaller. That is now acceptable on our TVs. Yes. That's a sea change. I mean, I I, I fundamentally disagree with YouTube on this one. Possibly YouTube as This is well? what I'm saying. The whole story is in that quote. Yeah. No, I, no, I agree. Because you look at that and then you look at the picture and it's her – Talking about products, and then uh, all the products right. are down at the bottom of the video. No, what, there, yes, that is true. Okay. That's I, not what you were doing. My about. point is you pull over in your car and actually look at this image, and you're like, here's what YouTube thought best represents their big idea. And you look at the thumbnail, and you look at the headline, and you're like, oh, YouTube has a quality problem. <laughs> because the headline is, I bought, in all, in all caps, many beauty products that actually work. Because that is how you alg – and maybe this video is great. I, I'm, I'm not saying the quality of the video is wrong. I'm saying YouTube is – the algorithm is actively cheapening the YouTube brand because it's a YouTube thumbnail with like a YouTube face on it. It's a headline that has all caps. It's shouting at you. And then underneath it, what you're supposed to do is buy some stuff. Yeah. And you're like, oh, this – all this adds up to a less premium good thing. Do you know what I mean? Like it's all of it is being in the mall where everyone's yelling at you. I think you're old. Like <laughs> that's that's what I mean. Not to put too fine a point on it, but like the idea. I think that this if, feels bad. I I think because I you like think, cool things that are cool. I'm sorry, oh, I didn't realize that was an old guy thing. <laughs> so, no, I mean like if if you're if you're mad at this particular video, fine. It has 2.8 million views, which I would say is a, a reasonable sign that it's it's pretty good and people like it. But also- I'm saying they should revert control of this algorithm to me personally, the president <laughs> of America. 
just if this if this thumbnail just had a jumping truck, would you be less mad about it? And then underneath it was trucks you could buy. Yeah, probably. Right. Uh, no, look, I I have I don't have anything to say about beauty product videos or this category video. I'm saying the presentation that YouTube picked for what do we want you to do on televisions is a shouty shopping video, right? Like all caps in the headline. Like they are trying to take the market away from television. That's long been the goal. On TVs is where they are growing the most. And I I think there's a real clash between what works in the algorithmic YouTube feed on phones and desktops and then this experience on a television. This proves the opposite. To okay. Me. What this says to me is that YouTube thought for years that what people would do when they sat down on their couch is they would YouTube like they television, which is to say, put something on and sit for 30 minutes and look at it without doing anything else. And YouTube has slowly discovered over time that not only is that not what people want to do, it's not even what they want to do with their remotes. That this thing where like fundamentally YouTube is about the thing that you're watching, but only in part about the thing that you're watching. It's also about who the creator is and what the description is and looking at the products in the video because a lot of people do like to shop for this stuff and seeing the comments and and finding recommendations and going down these rabbit holes. Like to me, what this says is, oh, people actually use YouTube on their TV with their remote exactly the same way they use it on their phone. And so what we need to give them is YouTube that looks like a desktop browser. Yeah, I, I think I agree, I agree with you. And in that specific way, I'm saying that even if you look at this headline, for some reason, the word bought is capitalized, but the words that actually work are not. <laughs> and mini beauty products is it all, all, all capitalized. Like, they are very the, tiny. The algorithmic, when, like when you take the algorithmic media and you just like make it this much bigger, I think that stuff is going to get highlighted in different ways. And maybe the fight is between people don't care and people do care. But you just end up in this place where all social media turns into QVC. And really the dream of all interactive TV has always been to be QVC. And YouTube turning itself into QVC, like literally turning itself into QVC, puts them right next to real QVC. Yeah. <laughs> Which is no, weird. I, I, I totally agree with that. And that is very clearly where all of this is going. They're like, look at some ads, pay us a bunch of money, and buy every single product that exists anywhere in this video. Yeah. And that is how we win. But you know what's interesting is the the way, like our commenters picked up on this too, on the, the piece that we wrote. Uh what was it, a few months ago now that TikTok changed the thing where now when you swipe up to see the comments, instead of pulling the comments up over the video, it shrinks the video just down to the top of the screen. Yeah. So you can still see the whole video, just not as big. Uh, that's essentially what this is doing now too, right? It's saying you want to get to the other part of the interface, instead of pulling it up over top of what you're seeing, we're just going to shrink what you're seeing. And I think you can argue about whether that's a, the correct viewing experience or not. But I think that is very much the trend of where we're headed is like, we want you to see the whole picture. We're just also going to recognize that the rest of the interface is at least just as important as the video. Or at least provides more opportunities to shop. Right. Mm, that one. I mean, it's just all. Oh, you're watching I'm, this. Yeah. I'm, I've been watching the video this whole time. I'm <laughs> sorry. I wanted to see what beauty products actually work, but they it's are all many. Like, they are, they are, they're they're very, many. very tiny, but it's, it's cheap stuff that I don't, I don't want to use this. Well, there are many. Yeah, but it's, but it's well, like you'd cheap. think it'd be good stuff, but cheaper. Not... It's cheap brands. Gotcha. Ice cold, Alex. Yeah, I'm 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 one of those bougie bitches when it comes to my Sephora runs. Uh, the last time I watched QVC, uh -huh. I was in a hotel room in California, and uh, it was you know it's the winter. It was just recently, mm -hmm. and on QVC in California, someone was earnestly trying to sell a corded snowblower, and being like, "This cord is so convenient. You just plug in the snowblower." And I was like, this is doomed. And somehow this is also the future of all media. It is. Just Everybody wants straightforwardly to be being like, what it is is a push snowblower, <laughs> but you want to just plug it right in. No batteries to worry about. <laughs> yeah, because then you then you get to use your your extension cord also purchased on QVC. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It really is amazing how much of like the stuff you see on TikTok now even steals some of the conventions of how people used to talk on QVC. Like the thing where it's like describe the problem somebody has in overly dramatic turns and then big beautiful turn into what a cool world you live in like that's now tiktok shop and they're like i can't believe how expensive it is it's on the tiktok shop it's only going to be yeah. this price for this long get it now it's like you're you're literally doing a qvc bit and i suspect most of these people 
probably don't know what QVC is and have certainly never seen it, but like, it just turns out that's the correct way to do a buy this thing from the video. It, <laughs> yeah. it, has, it has just been optimized over time. <laughs> yeah, there's just like one evolutionary way to yeah. tell someone to buy your stupid cheap product. And it's the QVC <laughs> way. Real yeah. like big thinkers. I was just watching this, the, you know, it's like the classic QVC like yeah. male host, female host. Like, Wow, what are you talking about yeah. today? How are you going to cook in your right. kitchen and, with And how that? do you power this snowblower? And I was like... <laughs> I don't know. This is like obvious on its face. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was very good. It was the most QVC I've watched in, in some time. Yeah. In the I, mid, it was 70 degrees in California. I was watching people try to sell me a snowblower. I was like, I don't, maybe I travel too much for work. I can't watch QVC because one time in the 90s, I watched an episode of Mama's Family where she got addicted to QVC. That's bad. And, and the family had to be like, you can't use QVC anymore. And for whatever reason, I was like, me too. Yeah. As like a five-year-old. Uh, the end. I will tell one more QVC related story. <laughs> My dad was the overnight doctor in the ER in uh-huh. Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. So he would come, he wouldn't be able to sleep at night when he wasn't working because right. he was used to being up all night. Boy, did we have a lot of stuff in my house. <laughs> Boy, did I grow up eating a lot of dehydrated apples. The only thing on TV at that time <laughs> of night. That's like, what are you going to uh, watch? I did it again. Six to eight weeks later, in the 80s, we got a food dehydrator. <laughs> uh, it was great. The fruit leather is incredible. He was at so proud of that house. food dehydrator. It was just a circle with a fan. I just, I don't know if you ever actually looked at it. Uh, never mind. Yeah, I've seen one. They're like, we took the hair dryer and now we've pointed it up. Mm-hmm. It's a food dehydrator. You get fruit, fruit leather. This is, by the way, the Dyson story is they invented a fan and now they only make fan related products. It's very good. Okay. Uh, other news. Spotify now has music videos. I, I don't subscribe. Oh, my God. Sorry. I, I'm excited for you all. I'm excited for everyone who subscribes and loves a music video. I just open YouTube on my TV in a tiny box next to below a bunch of sales links and, and watch my music videos that way. <laughs> That's true. You're going to be able to buy all the cars and beers and liquors and hats that you see in every music video for the rest of your life, Alex. Are you so excited? It's going to be really, really great for me. No, I think the the music video thing, like, it turns out that every streaming story right now is kind of a TikTok story. Like, and we've talked about it a bunch on this show in recent weeks, right? Like, this question of, like, okay, Universal's in a big fight with TikTok. TikTok, TikTok might be having an existential crisis, whether it's going to continue to exist. Who is going to show up and say, oh... All the music videos you want to watch, which are a gigantic portion of what is successful on the internet as a whole. Uh, And Spotify is like, yeah, we'll do it. But Spotify is doing it in like the slowest, weirdest way. They have like a tiny number of artists and a few videos. And it's like, guys, it's not actually that hard to put videos into your app, Spotify. Like, kudos for trying, I suppose. But like, if if you really wanted to do this, do it better. Also, Apple has had music videos forever. It's not a great yeah. player. It's not a cool experience. But if you're ever <laughs> bored on your Apple TV and your Apple Music subscriber, you can just be like, show me music videos. And we'll just play a playlist of music videos. Or you can open the YouTube app. <laughs> and, and do it I there. do think, yeah. though, this thing where uh, that, that YouTube music does very well and no one else does very well, where you can sort of seamlessly switch from video to song is very cool. And I think that's what Spotify is going for here, too. But Spotify is just like desperate to be an app that you look at more because they want you to subscribe discover more stuff pay them money and like look at ads uh but they just aren't gonna get there right like remember what was it like a year ago when they basically like redesigned the whole app to be tiktok and everybody was like no thanks like i just want to play a song and then put my phone away and i think they just they're i don't think they're ever gonna escape that honestly i think spotify is gonna buy paramount plus that's who's gonna do it (laughs) solves everything (laughs) done after netflix collapses (laughs) Uh, in other Spotify news, yeah, uh, Neil Young has returned to Spotify. I'm pretty sure this is only on the list, so we can reference the time that Neil Young was on the Vergecast and described oh, with his little with his little player with the Pono, and he described uh, the MacBook to me as Fisher Price quality, and said your new engineer is Captain Kangaroo. I think we can just run the clips, Andrew. I don't think we have to say anything else about this. Okay. That man uh, really cares about sound quality. Very confused about how digital audio sampling works. <laughs> Refuses to acknowledge <laughs> that it's very hard to hear the difference at an appropriate bit rate. Uh, and thinks that. The, and I just want to say, it the Mac. He thinks the MacBook Pro is a piece of crap. But an actual quote that we can run now. It's a piece of crap. Are you kidding? 
That's Fisher Price quality. That's like Captain Kangaroo, your new engineer. <laughs> the MacBook Pro, what are you talking about? You can't you can't get anything out of that thing. All right. There you go. Everybody. That was Neil Thanks, Young. Neil. No notes, Neil Young. <laughs> Uh, well, even even Neil has caved to Spotify. Yeah. Everyone does eventually. Well, not me. We, but I it is, it. I, I just appreciate the logic that like he left. He was the the like loud protester to Joe Rogan, right? When right. he signed a huge deal with Spotify, Neil Young was like, I can't be on this platform. And then Joe Rogan got an even bigger, but now non-exclusive deal. So he's now everywhere. And Neil Young's like, well, shit, I gotta, I gotta sell music somewhere. It's like, I do enjoy those royalties. Stuck. Yeah, those like, are nice. Go beyond, go beyond, like title. I don't think they have podcasts. Oh my god, Neil's Young website is so bananas. It's, it's incredible. amazing. Incredible. I wanted to read the blog post about his return to Spotify, um, but it appears to be down. And also, Neil Young's website is fully insane. And looks like an old time newspaper from it's the Wild so West. Good. It's incredible. Uh, it does have a full res audio player on it with a switch that says master. Yeah. Your choices are low res MP3 or master quality. I love it. It's very good. I again I love Neil Young. If we just go listen to the episode of the Vergecast after these clips, all of it was astounding. I'm rarely taken aback the way that Neil Young just took me aback <laughs> when I was like, so computers exist, and he was like, kill yourself. <laughs> 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 get this little music player all right last bit of video news mm -hmm. i'm just gonna say it it's about twitter mm. or i mean x yeah x uh linda yaccarino everyone's favorite yeah composed stable media executive uh wonderful. continues to say x is becoming a video first platform because you get more money from ads yeah I, when i look around the social media industry and the media industry I can confidently say that the pivot to video has worked out super great for everyone. Every time. And all these companies are doing great and not doing layoffs. Yep. Totally. True. <laughs> very, <laughs> very right. accurate thing you said. Yeah. Not uh, not the biggest companies in the world are super not doing layoffs because video is totally so lucrative not. for them. Um, and then everyone's favorite free speech warrior, Elon Musk, signed Don Lemon to do a show on X. I think he thought Don Lemon would be sort of the – the counterpart to Tucker Carlson, who does a show on X. Mm. Uh, Don Lemon said, okay, Elon, it'll be my first interview. They did an interview. We, we saw a, a tiny little clip of the interview. I couldn't finish watching the clip. The clip is Don Lemon saying, don't you think you have to answer to reporters for like hate speech on the platform? Yeah. And Elon saying, I don't have to talk to reporters. I'm only talking to you because you're on the X platform, which is very funny. Okay. Uh, deal canceled. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we talked about this, I believe, last week, but in classic... Elon Musk fashion, there was no actual contract. Mm. So now Don Lemon is out there threatening to sue X yes. for a contract that doesn't exist. And I just want all of these people, if you are somewhere around Elon Musk, just write some stuff down and sign it on a napkin. All right. In the notes app, have him take a Sharpie to your phone and sign your phone after showing him the contract on a notes app. Anything is better than the current situation where people just vibe deal with Elon. Uh, yeah, don't don't vibe deal. No, vi please, I beg of you. Um, what about handshake? Anyway, no, 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 no yeah. vibes. Handshakes are the ultimate vibes. Okay, sorry. I that, wanted to make sure. I wanted to like, I wanted to double check. I felt that way, but I, like I needed to yeah. check in. Handshakes. They should give that to you in law school. Okay. Handshakes are the ultimate vibes. All right. That's a, that's a class, actually. Like, no one really knows what's happening on the other side of that handshake. <laughs> well, I mean, not a contract in, in Elon's case. <laughs> Never a contract in Elon's case. Handshakes are the ultimate vibes, by the way, is Algorithmic Warfare's first album title. <laughs> <laughs> it's like surf rock and a very into it. Uh, anyhow, it's very funny that Elon uh, claims that he's a free speech absolutist and <laughs> canceled the deal over the most minor of questions uh, when you run a giant platform with speech on it. That interview is supposedly running on Monday. I am uh, going to watch as much of it as I can physically stomach. I, I started it in, in... You started just that clip. I started the clip. Don spoke. Elon started to talk and like everything about it. I was like, oh, I'm just cringing so hard. I can't even finish hearing him th like finish the sentence. Yeah, just the awkwardness alone is is tough. It was... But we'll see. 
Yeah. yeah. I, here's one thing I'll say. Many people can have many opinions of Don Lemon. Uh, Elon mostly signed all those deals with journalists who treat him like he has all the answers. Mm -hmm. Tucker, in his interviews with Elon, treats him like all the answers. Matt Taibbi treats him like, you're letting me do this thing with all the answers. This is the first time I think anyone's straight up been like, so there's a lot of racism here. Are you accountable for it? And he just didn't know what to do. Yeah. Mm. Elon does not like to be asked questions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> End of sentence. <laughs> End of sentence. He just, he, he doesn't like to be pushed ever. Like, do, do not push him. That's a good way to have your, your vibes deal. Fun vibe. Just sign contracts. If there's one thing <laughs> I, I just beg of you, if you, it, it protects both parties. It's not, all right, we got to take a break. We'll be here at five. There are form contracts available online, all right? <laughs> Just those will be fine. Anything. <laughs> we'll be right back. All right, we're back. Lightning round. We got to make this fact. We are way over. This has been a deep verge cast. We did food dehydrators. We did Elon <laughs> Musk. Uh, hour on the First Amendment. Chinese interference. We talked about Motor Trend TV. I just want to say we've been everywhere. Mm -hmm. This is why you come here. Yeah. And now it's the lightning round. And David says he has a sponsor. Yes. So at South by Southwest, uh, a friend of the Verge cast named Simon came and it was his birthday. And his big plan was when we said it was lightning round time to scream, it's my birthday and I'm sponsoring the Verge cast. We didn't do a lightning round. And he came up to me like full devastated. Oh, so, no. So Simon today is sponsoring the lightning round. Hell yeah, Simon. Happy birthday, Simon. Simon, we love you. Happy birthday. All right. For your lightning round. Kranz is going to talk about the British monarchy. <laughs> yeah. oh You're God. welcome. We're so long into the show to just be getting into this now. <laughs> well, it's okay because this is going to be, I think, the shortest what is a photo uh, one we've ever had. Neil, I will not be talking. He will simply be <laughs> sighing loudly the entire time. I hate the story so much. It's so good. Uh, yeah. So so Kate Middleton has been out of public. Who's she? She's she's just some she's a lady who who gets a lot of money to live in England and look pretty. Very good. Um, and and she uh, has been out of the public view, and there's been a lot of theories about it. And then a relatively recently a Spanish journalist who at one point said out of pocket things about Michael Jackson and how he was probably murdered. Wow, where are we going yeah. with this? Oh boy. She said Kate Middleton is in a coma. And and then and then the, the 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 royals came back and said she's not, and that's very unusual because they usually don't re respond to like absolutely insane, stupid stuff. And so everybody's like, "Where is she then?" So they released this photo, and apparently Kate herself has claimed that she did the Photoshop job, but someone did it, and they did a piss poor job. Wait, can I ask? When the first time either of you saw this photo, mm -hmm. and Neil, I know you follow her on Instagram, so you saw it. <laughs> She's in your close friend circle, so yeah. I know you saw it very quickly. I only pretend to not care about the British monarchy because Kate and I have been involved for several years. <laughs> That's uh, where everyone she has is. seen this photo. I don't yeah. feel like I need to describe it, but if you if you haven't, go go to the internet. It will find no, you. No, continue living uh, your life in peace. Yeah. Under no circumstances <laughs> should you pull over your car and look for this image. Uh, but did either of you clock this as like? weird yes, in any way. Yes, 100%. Did you? Right yeah. away? Yeah. Okay. Like, I looked at it and I was like, why does everybody, like, they all look like they have AI faces. Like, they're all smiling oh, in the same Oh, interesting. You went okay. that far. Yeah, and then I didn't, like, get to, like, zoom in and everything, and I didn't realize it was a story because I had to get on a flight. And so I was like, this is so stupid, and I sent it to all my friends who we talk, sometimes talk about royal stuff. One it's okay. Them, it's just me. Every, you are okay. Other people no, are allowed to care about the royal I, family. I don't actually care that much. I have a lot of friends who do. So we have a like, lot of staffers who care about this oh, like, yeah. the most. And yeah. it's it's great. Ironically, none of our British staffers. Just a bunch of <laughs> not Americans. Only Americans. Yeah. It's only the, the farther Yanks. away you live from England, the more it appears you care about this. That's true, right. yeah. actually. I wonder if it keeps that keeps going. So if you circle around the Pacific Ocean, you start caring about it less. You again. get to Japan and everybody's <laughs> like up in arms about Kate Middleton. <laughs> Could be. But uh, yeah, no, it was it was clear to me like something was weird in the photo because her head was enormous. I was like, why is her head so huge in this picture? And and it turns out because the whole most of it was Photoshop. We don't know entirely how much. Uh, Kate later dropped like a, a thing being like, I just love to mess around with Photoshop. Still no photo of her. The only photo we've seen is a picture of her husband driving. And there was a woman looking away when the photo was taken. And they said, that's Kate. That's good. And it's like, mm, is it? So unclear where she is. 
Unclear if she's alive. Can I answer the one question? Yeah. Not a photo. Not a photo? You think yeah. so? Yeah. Because of a, Photoshop? Just straightforwardly, not a moment in time. Yeah. it was. That was my big question is, yeah. what is a photo? Is this a photo? And it feels like no. And what's cool is everyone else agrees, including all of like the, 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 the press, everybody, like AP, Reuters, everybody said, yeah, we're not going to carry this photo because it's not a photo. And it's been manipulated. And, and so- yeah. Very definitive, not a photo. Everybody clocked it. I love how many people clocked it. I love how quickly, like, it and made I will me feel say the, the, the misinformation on the social media platforms about what's been edited here is out of control. So the number of people That's, who think it's yeah. AI is very high. Uh, the number of people who've decided, uh, what's it, like a magazine cover? It was a Vogue cover, I think, from years ago. Years and it's like, and they you know, that's the just face. her face. And yeah. It's like, it's nowhere close to being the same face. Yeah. No. It's, it's just at an angle. It is very funny. You see them side by side and it's it's the same person making what amounts to essentially two totally different faces. And everybody's <laughs> like, they swapped them. And it's like, no, they super didn't. Uh, but the heart of the what is a photo debate, the the, the heart of it is if you take a long sequence of photos over a period of time and synthesize one moment in time that never happened, but con that contains all the other moments in time, is that a photo? That's the heart of yeah. the... Right, like iPhone Smart HDR, or whatever they call it now, the photonic engine <laughs> takes you know eight frames and synthesizes one exposure. And that's what Kate did. But she, but the eight frames happened like over five years. You know? It's like <laughs> that's not the same thing. Is that even her kids? <laughs> Who can say? Uh, the reason you asked and I said I clocked it right away is uh, I have but one child. And getting her to look at the camera and smile <laughs> is very difficult. And I was like, all three of them? No way. Like, just yeah. like immediately, I was like, this is some JCPenney shit. Like, no mm -hmm. way. And the, the, it's the same smile on all of them. They all look like they have that, that's the, yeah. the filter in TikTok or whatever that makes you smile. That's what they, they all look like. They do. It's horrible. Um, I'm sorry I had to write about it. I know a lot, we had a lot of commenters. I, I don't think we should apologize for writing okay. about it. You, yeah, because I was going to say, we had a lot of commenters say, who gives a all shit? All those commenters clicked and commented on the story. <laughs> this is the top story on our site by a mile. People really care about this. I do not, I want to be very clear about this. I'm an Indian American. My people have escaped the British royal family twice. We literally kicked these people out of, out of the countries that I'm from twice. Two different countries. We brought, came together. Here I am. Don't need you and your queen on my money. Get out of here. <laughs> like, I got king nothing now. for you. Oh, it's a king now. Sure, I didn't even remember that. Uh, but I understand why it's important. I yeah. understand why so many members of our staff thinks it's important. I understand why people are reading the shit out of it. Because it's hysterical. It's just, I'm from Westworld and I'm looking, literally getting this photo and be like, doesn't look like anything to me. It's just like <laughs> moving on. I mean, I do think if you want to, like, there's a really interesting story about, like, the media and information sharing and how mm. we understand what's true. And, like, all of that is fine and good. And, like, Liz Lopato, I think, is in the middle of writing what I assume will be 35,000 words about yes. the Daily Mail that will be very good. And I'm very excited to read it. But, like, I'm with you. It's n it's absolutely not an AI story. And it is pretty much not at all a what is a photo story because it's a, just a hacky Photoshop job that somebody C did. CNN did a heroic job of trying to make it a what is a photo story. They did. It, it, they're like, this and I admire the, the question of what even is a photo. I was like, you guys. And also, thank you to everyone who got that push notification and immediately sent it to us. <laughs> this is how we know you are our people. <laughs> Anyhow. Uh, well, I hope Kate's okay. Yeah. Who 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 can say? They may be weakened at burning. She hasn't texted me not. back. Yeah. Yeah. What's up with that, Kate? Get to it. Come on. Neil's waiting. It's a love affair. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? This is why I have to pretend to discard to disregard I mean, the world. This is one of the rumors is that that he was cheating on her. So, well, so I think like, the rumor should be that Yeah, like Kate she and I. got back at him with you. That's wow. I can't even imagine how dismissive my wife will be of this idea. <laughs> <laughs> my actual divorce lawyer wife would be like, nah, that's not true. Yes, <laughs> no, shut it down. <laughs> that's that's not the person I married. Uh okay, second lightning round. Uh I'll just go. As promised, uh -huh. while we have been recording Starship. The third launched, went up to orbit, Okay. opened some doors to prove it could open some doors, and then it was supposed to splash down. D did not. <laughs> well, presumably it did, just not in the way that everyone was hoping for. Well, no, the quote from SpaceX spokesperson uh, that we have in our story, uh, we haven't 
heard from the ship up until this point, and so the team has made the call that the ship has been lost, so no splashdown today. Oh, you're right. I took that to mean, like, it's going to come down, we just don't know where, but actually what that means is it's still up there somewhere. <laughs> or it burned up in the atmosphere. Or, or, yeah, or it, it, it came down and they lost track of it. Or it exploded in some other way. Yeah. So. Any number of exciting opportunities so, for, for Starship fans. So as, as successes go... Well, so uh, much, much more successful... Um, than before mm-hmm. uh, yeah. when it fully exploded that's, that's, uh, and then when the booster exploded. This one w- went all the way up. It did some planned maneuvers. Love a maneuver. Um, that's uh, it. And then, that's... quote, remained in one piece until contact was lost. <laughs> I mean, I think it's generally true in these cases that getting it down is the part the Yeah, that's the part that they worked concerned. on the hardest yeah, for the longest That time. is the m- massive engineering problem with it. We, yeah. We've gotten but really good But in a test like this, like, shit. worry about that once you can get the thing where it's going, right? Like, let's get it there, and then we'll worry about getting it back. And it seems like the getting it there, we're getting there. Like, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Um, and probably the guy who runs that company... Uh, if a guy should run the company, it's maybe well, a thing that I could, Don I mean, say. Why does he care if it comes back? He wants to go up and, and stay up. Go so. to Mars, Elon. Yeah. I think everyone would be happier. It'll be fine. All right. Okay, David, my lightning yours. round. I'm just going to run away from that as fast as I can. <laughs> yeah. I just, cool. I just want to take you on like a brief emotional roller coaster that I went on earlier this week, uh-huh. uh, which is when I read a headline from Tom Warren, lovely reporter at The Verge, who said, Apple to allow iOS app downloads direct from websites in the EU. David wakes up to this news. Hell yeah. Sounds awesome. Super exciting. Apple's going to like let you properly sideload. And then you scroll down a ways and Apple has done what it always does, which is say a thing and then set up like a hilarious set of hoops you have to jump through in order for this to be real. The you hoops have to be so in good. Apple's developer program. You have to be in good standing. You have to have more than a million annual installs in the EU, which is actually a huge number. Uh, you have to only offer apps from your developer account. You have to be responsive to communications from Apple. You have to publish your data. Sh- like you basically have to do all the things you have to do to be in the app store only harder. And then you can have it from. Yeah. You have website. to like go on a dinner date with Tim Cook at one point. <laughs> like that was yeah, a really right. weird one. I didn't understand that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have to go to the house of everyone who wants to download your app and do it for them. Yeah. Uh, so Help yeah, them, again, yeah. like this is, this is just what Apple is doing here, right? Like they are they are allowing things but making it so onerous that I don't think anything real is actually going to change for people. But just the fact that this is a thing that technically exists, I still think is very cool. Yeah. The concept is cool. The execution is hot garbage. Yes. I'm just like, how is this going to work? The EU is absolutely like, come on, man. They won't stop. They won't stop. They're relentlessly European. Yeah. They will come to your house and then take a nap around 4 p.m. and they they're going to wake up and they're going to regulate the shit out of you. They will work six hours and they will get a <laughs> lot done in that six hours. They will. They are, I, don't, I don't mean to denigrate our European friends. They're wonderful. Um, no, because they are getting stuff done. I think I think Europe is doing a much better job at legislating technology than the United States. And it's because they eat well and sleep right. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> they walk a lot. Yeah, we figured it out. <laughs> we solved it. You do some walkable cities. And then suddenly you're able to do tech regulation. I think all this stuff we've talked about this at length is all going to backfire on Apple. Like this is political nightmare mm-hmm. territory for Apple. Yes. These like technical compliance measures that don't actually add up to anything real. They're they're just getting in trouble. All right, yep. Hans, you want to do one more? Let's... Yeah, I got I got one more, and that is uh, our, our European friends will already know about this. The Dyson three sixty Viz Nav. What is that, you ask, with a name <laughs> like the Dyson 360 ViznaV? That is a, a robot vacuum cleaner that uses visual navigation. Wait, do you know what I just realized, Alex? What's that? Do you remember when Dyson was building an electric car? <laughs> they for sure had a thing called ViznaV, and we're like, oh, crap, we got to use this name for something. We like bought the domain name. That's where this came from. How was the car going to go? Was it going to like have a big fan on the back? I'm telling you, anytime Dyson tries to make something that isn't a fan-based product, Couldn't work. that either sucks or blows, <laughs> to, get, to get nowhere. And this thing <laughs> does apparently suck. Um, <laughs> like that, that That's its whole thing is it's supposed to be really good at it. And it has the most enormous fluffy brush. Like, <laughs> like she said, it's got a really fluffy brush. And I was like... That's a weird thing for you to say, and I don't understand. And then she like sent me a picture, and I was like, "No, it's awesome! Like, I want to just reach through the photo and touch it. 
Um, it just looks very squeezable. But she's going to be – she just got it in. Uh, it's it's finally available in the United States or is about to be available in the United States. She just got it in. She's going to be spending a lot of time messing around with it. How stupidly expensive is it? It's so expensive. It's over $1,000. <sighs> yeah. Like, come on. Can I just say the way David this thing asking looks? that question. I, want... I mean, it's Dyson, so I assume whatever number I think I should just double it, and that's what Dyson costs. This is not going to fit under – if you have one of those cool platform beds with, like – real low clearance to the ground this will not clean under it uh it is, it is quite tall twelve hundred dollars sorry yeah. and purple yeah. okay. cool uh, it does look like one of those things in the matrix that puts you back in the power plant yeah but like in a friendly way <laughs> that's what it's doing to the dirt that's how the dirt feels when it, when it comes at it it's I like, you know that scene? It's like, I'll get my body back to the power plant, but I don't want to know nothing. It's like, this <laughs> thing comes to your house and it's like, we'll get you back in there, but you have to Shut betray up. Neo. Uh, I have weird feelings about this vacuum cleaner. But it's so fluffy looking. Like, did you look at the... Look at, it does look very fluffy. I, I I don't know why I like both both uh, Jen and I were both like, oh my God, this brush. Like we lost our minds over the brush, which was very weird and fun for us. I'm excited to see what she does with it. This, this is vacuum her house? Yeah. But she's got a lot of Robovacs in there right now. And I really want her to put knives on all of them and have them fight. And she told me no. So uh, um, I'll update you guys on that. We can Let's work on that together. Yeah, we can work on that. I think we can do it. All right, Dave. What's, what, do you have another one or is it just me again? Mine's just really quick, um, which is that Microsoft Teams is now attempting to become like an app that families use to talk to each other. And Microsoft has been talking about this for a while as like a thing they want to do, but they're now like unifying the app so you can have personal and work accounts together. And I just feel very vindicated by the fact that I've been saying Teams was the stupidest possible name for this product this whole time. And... Uh, I was right, and I feel good about it. <laughs> Can you imagine, like, going home tonight and being like, "Okay, I'm going to set up the family teams, and then we're, that's how we're going to like." No, I'm out. Pass. Abort. Teams, get out of here. I I'm proud of you for having feelings about Microsoft Teams. Thank Most you. people I know who use Teams, including me, whenever I use it, I try to use it on my computer. Something bad happens. I join the team meeting. The audio is all messed up, and I always say this thing. I have a very complex relationship with Microsoft Teams. And then everyone in the room starts laughing. Mm -hmm. It's a good joke. Because it's just... It's just... It's good. Yeah. Everyone knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. Whatever it's it is. that and Zoom has to update every single time every you time. use it. That's the, Those are the two <laughs> facts of life now. It's very good. And then uh, Google Meet on my 2015 iMac. Just uh, talk about a Dyson fan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Woo, that thing could power a car. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, it's not great. Got to get a new Mac. Still working on it. Uh, okay, mine, my last one, and we got to wrap this up. Uh, many people wrote in to ask about this. Nikon is acquiring Red. So mm. Red, the big famous camera manufacturer. The, I think movies. you mean phone maker. Thank the you. Phone maker. The, the Red Hydrogen One, famously one of the worst products we have ever reviewed. Incredible. Uh, a review so bad they canceled the product. It's only happened a few times in our history. I was just, uh, I loved that thing. I mean, I loved, like, its existence. I didn't love it. What if we took the design language of a rugged hard drive <laughs> and made you hold it all the time? It was so <laughs> Look at it. Ridiculous. It was very bad. Bad 3D screen as well. Um, that is not why they're selling to Nikon. Yeah. They weren't like, we're so embarrassed we got to get out of this. There's been some patent battles in the mm. past between these two. Um, if you're Nikon, you know that so much of the action and imaging is happening in video mm -hmm. that it's driving a huge amount of the... Just the sensor technology that is happening, just all the stuff is happening on the video side. Um, and that's can, not what Nikon's known for. It's not with not even a little bit. Nope. Not at all. Um, so you, you see the Canons and the Sony's of the world like really lean into video. There's just an explosion of digital video making happening everywhere. Red obviously owns a big chunk of that. I'm not entirely sure how the shape of this patent battle led to an acquisition. I just know strategically Nikon was kind of out of moves. Yeah. And I think Red saw a number and they took the number. I'm very curious to see if Nikon cameras turn more into Red cameras because I don't think the people who use Red cameras will accept them turning more into Nikon cameras. No. I feel like both ways. Like neither neither one of those crews want to use that product, the other product. Yeah. And 
Uh, yeah, which uh, is uh, but that's that that makes it a good deal for them is because then they get both of those those. Audiences. Yeah, maybe that's OK. Yeah. Like may, that's Red is fine. a good brand with great products. Like maybe maybe the best place to land is just like, oh, you need Nikon to have a video strategy. Like here it is. It's called Red. And Nikon's yeah. got that's good glass. So it's like. Yeah. Nikon, yeah. I mean, I'm a Nikon person famously. Mm-hmm. Uh, our video team is deeply confused by this at all times. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> I love my Nikon. Uh, D7500 still going strong. Um, that, we'll just see. It is also, by the way, it is a good time in still cameras. We haven't really talked about this, but Becca's been doing a lot of coverage of like very exciting still cameras from Fuji and Leica that are coming out. That Fuji film, I like. I think about it a lot. I'm like, yeah. I don't need that camera, but what if what if I got into photography again? That's that's <laughs> what it, like. That's a midlife crisis camera right there. I'm like, yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. What if Max doesn't go to college? Yeah. College is overrated. Yeah. What what you want? Get a cool camera. Beautiful street photography. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry, kid. Uh, I took a picture of a dumpster. Okay, uh, that it is it. That's the Vergecast. We're gonna send her to college one way or the other. <laughs> we'll just see how many dumpster photos pay for it. Yeah. Uh, if she wants to go, which she's gonna want to because I'm her father. Uh, okay, that's it. That's Vergecast. We've gone way over. Thank you for listening. Uh, many things to give us feedback on this time. David, tell us how they can get in contact with us. You can email us vergecast at theverge dot com. That goes to all of us. Um, or you can call the hotline. 866 Uh We got a tweet from somebody the other day who thought it was very funny that we used to tell everybody about Twitter and then we told people about threads for a minute and now we want them to call our landline, <laughs> which is objectively very funny. Um, we're all also on threads. You can find us there. Uh, and also just like theverge.com. We make a website. It's pretty good. Yeah. Come to it directly. Escape the algorithms. That should be our new tagline. Escape from algorithms. It's pretty good. All right. That's it. Rock and roll. <laughs> And that's it for the Vergecast this week. Hey, we'd love to hear from you. Give us a call at 866-VERGE-11. The Vergecast is a production of The Verge and Vox Media Podcast Network. Our show is produced by Andrew Marino and Liam James. That's it. We'll see you next week.